Hey, folks, welcome back to Money and Politics Now. It is uh, September 9, and I'm going to be uh, doing something a little different tonight because I'm playing on injured reserve, and no, I'm not trying to be cool here, but I went to the eye doctor this afternoon, and they dilated my eyes. So it's just hard for me to see with, you know, I'm putting the sunglasses on because everything is so bright otherwise. Uh, they'll come back to normal in a bit. Uh, but what I wanted to do is, uh, I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replay part of a video I made back on July 12th. Before I do that, uh, Thomas and I were on uh, Twitter Spaces with uh, the Humboldt Nation last night, and we were on there for about three hours from uh, 7 to 10 Central Time, and had some good conversation. And one of the things that stuck with me, we were talking for a while there about NFTs, and one thing that came out relative to NFTs was that if, instead I should say, of, of it NFTs being solely uh, for things like, you know, photo photography or for celebrities or sports uh, people or artwork, that it, it might be something utilized in area, aspects of the law. And if not, if not NFTs, then, uh, certainly the blockchain. So it's kind of fascinating to think about. And when you think about things like our identity, so our identity isn't stolen. Um, when you go, you know, sometimes I, we've probably all seen this where a friend on Facebook has their profile stolen. And that's, uh, that creates an issue. And what if we had a way of securing that? Um, you know, there, there, it just, I just wanted to bring that up. That was one of the things I thought was interesting. One of the things I'm going to talk about tonight is I want to, I want to go back uh, to vi revisit a story on in mode that I did back in July 12. And I'm going to play part of that video here in a second from July 12. But this is now, as you can see, closed at uh, 130, let's call it $7, $137. Earlier in the day today, it, uh, and, and of course at 137 was up 3.83, which is a 2.88, but earlier in the day, it went even higher and was at about 141. So it came back about $5 uh, from where it was. And this is why, again, that's why I said InMode is, is another great growth story that I think you should not ignore. And as I said before, buy one share if you want, buy two shares if you want, buy a thousand shares if you can. I think it's going to be a, um, a hell of a good stock to have in your portfolio. Um, in fact, if you want, open up an account at wherever you want to open it, whether it's Schwab or E-Trade or whatever. Uh, have, have a custodian account for your kid and, and buy them a share and let that thing grow for a number of years. Uh, you know, that's, that's another good way to play this. I know you're going to, you want to have money, in, and of course you could have uh, basically 136 shares of Humble for every share of InMode. It's just that InMode is also going to be one of these companies that grows uh, over time. So what I want to do is to replay about five minutes of my, my uh, program from July 12 when I really kind of focused on, on the stock and why I thought it was good. And you just saw it was at 137. Back on July 12, folks, it was at 108. Now that's only about two months ago. And so you're up almost $30, which is about a 30, close to a 30% increase. And when it was up, 
to 108 back then. It had just recently moved up from about $86. So now you're talking about from $86 to $137. That's about a 50-point move uh, since roughly May. I'd have to go back and look when it was at 100 or when it was at 86. But again, if you miss the program on July 12, here's a portion of it. Here's a portion of why I like in mode. And I think it's going to continue to grow for years, irrespective of COVID, irrespective of uh, how the overall economy is going. You know, oil, which I've said before, dig and others, that's going to be based on the reemergence of the economy, the reopening of the economy. But, you know, this is a company that I think is more or less recession proof. So with that said, I start off uh, on my July 12 company here kind of apologizing that I hadn't pounded the table earlier and told you to buy in mode. So let's go ahead and we'll play that now. Is always been one of my very favorite stocks since I've started this channel with you. And uh, that stock is in mode. INMD. It's in the aesthetics industry. And I... I remember saying it, and I, I would mention it just here and there, um, but it it is something where I remember saying that, hey, will people spend a lot of money so that they look good? And the will women do it, I remember saying. And the uh, obvious answer is yes, they will. And so InMode has been written up in different magazines, as you can see. This is uh, one of their web pages. Uh, written up in Vogue and different things. They have a, uh, InMode has a corporate uh, video that they put out, and I, it, it's long, and so I condense that a bit. So what I want to do is share with you that video uh, that I've edited. It still runs about two minutes, but it's going to tell you a lot. And basically, I'll tell you, and then I'll show you. It is a... Um, video that, or uh, the company rather, I should say is an Israeli company that going from memory became public in August of 2019. And by December, they were up 300%. That's when they came to my attention. And then we get to early 2020 and of course COVID hit. But uh, it it is still growing. It's been growing fast. They just came out with their preliminary earnings and I'll be uh, giving you some of that, but let's bring that up real quick. Inmo today closed at $108 a share, up $12. So that's a 12.5% gain. And it is a, a business that is kicking butt and having great, not only great growth, but good earnings and high earnings. Um, and they're saving their customers money. So let's take a listen to this video, which will, I think, give you a much better idea of what the company does. And then we'll, I'll come back and we'll talk about some of the earnings and why I think you should be buying it. Nearly every man and woman over the age of 40 suffers from a medical or aesthetic problem that affects their well being. In response, in-mode technologies have enabled physicians to provide office-based procedures instead of undergoing full surgical procedures in the hospital. In-mode's cutting-edge platforms offer an extensive array of non-invasive and minimally invasive treatment solutions. Our innovative procedures include skin tightening, wrinkle treatment, skin resurfacing, pigmentation, cellulite, body contouring, and face remodeling with multiple modalities available using hands-free innovations. We provide non-excisional and minimally invasive office-based surgical solutions to an array of medical specialties, including plastic surgery, gynecology, ophthalmology, dental, ENT, and urology. And our numbers say it all. We have seen unprecedented growth in recent years, with 2020 generating revenue of more than $200 million. 
our demonstrated history of profitable growth is expected to continue well into the future. We distribute medical innovations through an established direct sales force as well as an extensive distributor network. People between the ages of 35 and 70 are increasingly looking for treatments that provide comparable results to full surgical procedures, lengthy recovery time, or scarring. The RFAL family, including BodyTight, FaceTight, AccuTight, and Aviva, delivers directional RF energy to effectively remodel tissue and fat. Eyelid contraction and fat reduction is achieved with the Accutite. So pretty impressive results. And as they said in the video, a lot of people, you know, you get older, you get some weight putting on, you go through uh, just the aging process. And, you know, I, I look back at years ago and I was just saying, to a friend about how you look back at my grandmother's time, and when she was 50, she looked so old. Well, they didn't have hair dye like they have today. They just didn't have a whole lot of things that they had today. And you look at any number of people today who were in their 70s or even 80s, people like Jane Fonda, Raquel Welch, people who you know, don't look their age. They look years, decades younger. Uh, and this is part of the trend, just as the hair dye and the rest came better eating. Uh, I think in mode is something that is going to be growing, in my estimation, for years to All right, we're going to cut out there. So that was in mode uh, as my report went from July, <laughs> July the 12th. And I'm laughing at myself with the sunglasses. And if you caught this lady it's just I had my eyes dilated earlier today I'm not trying to be cool um, so that said folks uh, I, th I still think that is a, a great stock and where you just saw that it was a hundred and eight dollars it is today 137 and again I think this will continue to go up in value and is one that you want to hold in your portfolio. So I, uh, while we talk uh, every night almost, uh, at least some point about uh, Humble, it, it's not that uh, we only want to talk only about Humble. What we want to do is make money and uh, make money for the long run. Uh, <clears throat> so going back to Humble, I'm going to uh, bring that up. We, we were up for a while, we went down. Uh, let me get this H M B L. Um, and let me bring that over. So here's a story today on Humble, where we are. We closed out at uh, 92 cents, as you can see, down uh, about five percent, four and a half percent. Um, I don't put any. You know, it is what it is. I I just think uh, we had we had a run up from about here to what about a dime, and I think some people were buying when it was low, when it went down to sixty three cents, when they got up to a buck five or so from sixty five cents. You know, you have a forty percent forty cent gain. When you had a 40 cent gain in uh, a short amount of time, and that's 40 cents on a purchase of 65 cents a share, that's a hell of a gain. That's like 66%. And probably that was, I'd have to go back and look, but in the nature of about three to four weeks. So, you know, you can't blame some people who might have gone out and they might have bought. 10,000 shares, let's say, for $6,300 or $6,500, and then they turn around and sell it for 10,000, uh, you know, 50 bucks, and, you know, pick up close to uh, $3,500, $3,700 uh, 
in a short amount of time. Maybe my math is off, but you get the idea. I'm a little fuzzy from going to the doctor. Anyway, uh, so I, obviously I'm very keen on Humble. And as we spoke last night on the uh, face, uh, Twitter spaces, it's amazing how much uh, enthusiasm there is, how much cooperation, the goodwill that we have within Humble Nation, and the, the good information sharing. So uh, hello to all my friends out there in Humble Land and who uh, have been joining us uh, and inviting me, because I haven't been organizing it. Um, and, you know, thanks, thanks for doing that. Thanks for joining those of you who uh, tuned in. <clears throat> and... Now, we're also going to have, uh, it's ACME, as you, let me just, if you didn't see last night, in Nashville, if you're going, on Friday, September 24, it is at ACME Bar and Grill, or Feed and Seed, I think, but anyway, it's it's a bar right on the river, overlooking the river, and uh, I know Thomas and I will be there, and we're looking forward to seeing uh, all of you. I won't be... If I'm wearing the glasses then, it'll be because it's sunny outside. Uh, but anyway, we're looking forward to that. And I think, folks, that as we analyze uh, what's going on in Humble, I think uh, you are going to be rewarded. I think richly rewarded. Of course, there's no guarantees and in investing always involves risk. But I would say you're going to be richly rewarded. I haven't talked about Humble for nothing. And it's just a question of time. And, by, and I don't mean by that that you're going to wait 20 years. In other words, when you are now, just as we just talked and you went, you know, we saw the stock price go from 65 cents to a buck five. When we're talking still today at 90, what was it, 92 cents? Um, you know, uh, it's you're going to look back and go, "Oh man, I wish it was. I wish it was at 92 cents again, so I could load up." I know you're going to be saying that because it won't be that long. And I suspect that as we go into next year, uh, we will be seeing the stock move. And I'm no one has a crystal ball, but I think we're going to continue to see the development of the whole fintech. Tsunami, as I referred to it last last night, and we saw just what yesterday. I think that Panama is now moving to a digital currency. I, I forget what was the other one was. Was it Ecuador? Uh, we are seeing, as I tweeted, you're seeing history happen right in front of your eyes. The fintech revolution, the globe is global economy. We're moving away from. Uh, the world of paper currencies. And this is going to be a global movement and Humble is part of it. So I'll let you go with that. Uh, you've heard, you'd heard it before, but uh, it's real. It's, you see it happening. It's not just with Humble. And I think Humble is led by a great team. I think there's some very exciting news that we will be having I would say at least across probably the next, what, uh, year, because, uh, you know, we still got to get the, um, we got to get the peer-to-peer -peer out at some point coming up. There's going to be, I would guess, some other purchases, just a whole host of news that's going to come out. It's the nature of the beast when you are talking about a startup company. Anyway, folks, hang tight. Um, I'll let you go for tonight. Thanks for tolerating my eyes. I hope you enjoyed looking at the update again on in mode uh, and that I would encourage you to, as I said before, take, take a position. I think it's one to buy in mode and then stick it away in your sock drawer and you know come back to it years from now uh, with some amazement of where it grew. And with that, I'll say good night and hopefully we will see you again tomorrow. Take care, folks.